Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I am the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a pick a group tarot reading. We're going to be asking Spirit, what was your person thinking and feeling last time they saw you? It's going to be juicy, very extensive, okay? A heck of a lot of information came through. I'm filming your intro after I did all your groups and they're extended so I can tell you that it's pretty juicy. Um, similar themes but as I always say each of the three groups are very different so make sure that you take your time to select a group that you genuinely feel most drawn to and if anything doesn't resonate um, obviously don't let it take away from your message, don't let it take from you but by all means maybe pick a different group and see if those messages resonate more as well. So what can you expect? In the YouTube portion, because there will be an extended reading, in the YouTube portion, we're going to have a look at your energy and your person's energy towards each other. The way that I'm going to do this reading is we're going to have a person A and a person B. That way, if you resonate more as person A, you can take those messages and treat person B like the way your person was feeling last time they saw you. So we're going to cover what you and your person's energy was towards each other last time you saw each other. We're going to have a look at what you were thinking, what they were thinking, what you were feeling, what they were feeling, what you wanted to say, what they wanted to say, and then we're going to get advice as well on YouTube. In the extended reading, we're going to take the reading further by having a look at what you've learned since you last saw your person, what they learned since they last saw you. We're going to have a look at what you hope for in the future of your connection, what they hope for in terms of the future of your connection. We're going to have a look at what you'll say to each other next time you see each other. And we're going to get advice on what you should do or what action you should take or how, what should happen next time you see each other. So that's the extended reading and that's what you can expect right here on YouTube as well. Let me take you into the pick a group portion now where you can choose a group and start getting messages from your reading. Okay, so welcome everybody to the pick a group portion of today's reading. As you can see, I have three groups in front of me, three groups for you to choose from. It's very important that you pick a group that you're feeling most drawn to, as each of these groups will contain very different messages about what your person was thinking and feeling last time they saw you. You do not have to rush the selection process. In fact, if you need more time, you're more than welcome to pause the video or join me in the brief one minute meditation portion of today's reading in order to tune into your intuition and get a clearer feeling about which of these three groups you're feeling most drawn to. Let's start by introducing you to the groups. Group one, you have the opalite crystal over here and your group will also have the Cosmic Slumber Tarot deck. Now I'm not gonna show you the cards because I don't want the tarot cards to sway you or distract you. I want you to use your intuition or any other weird, wild, wonderful method to feel which of these three groups you believe will have the most honest messages for you. So that's group one with the Cosmic Slumber Tarot deck and we also have the Opalite Crystal. Moving forward, we have Groupus Tupus next with the Flower Agate Tower here. Beautiful crystal, very, very beautiful crystal. One of my favorites. And you also have the She-Wolf Tarot deck by Serpent Fire as well for Groupus Tupus. Group number two, those are your objects. Last but not least, we have group number three over here with the Snowflake Obsidian Crystal. And group three also has the Tarot Del Toro deck by Thomas Hiho. Um, and I just feel like this deck... <laughs> 
definitely has a different energy <laughs> and so does the crystal to the other groups so take your time I chose very different decks very different crystals for a reason I wanted you to really just go with what you're feeling most drawn to and to hopefully see that they are very different groups so that you're not kind of getting distracted by things being too similar when you know which of these three groups you're feeling most drawn to click on your timestamp in the description box and join me in your reading So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with the rest in mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome to your reading. Today we're asking Spirit what was your person thinking last time they saw you. It's going to be a fairly extensive reading group one. We're going to be having a look at the energy that the two of you had last time you saw each other. We're going to have a look at what your person was thinking how they were feeling and then we're going to get advice at the end of the YouTube portion because these readings can often be triggering so my goal is to always obviously give you information but have you leaving this reading feeling well informed and just well supported as well especially if something triggering does come out I'm also going to have an extended reading um, we'll talk about that more at the end group one but the extended reading the goal there is to get more closure we're going to have a look at how your person has learned since or what your person has learned since they last saw you and we're also going to have a look at what they are hoping for in the future of this connection what is your person's hopes so group one if you chose this cosmic slumber tarot deck with the opalite or moonstone should i say crystal over here um, then this is going to be your reading i'm going to put your crystal up here next to that flame and let's get into it group one aye, aye, aye. yeah okay so i'm Having a horrible time shuffling this deck, but also Spirit doesn't want me to use that deck yet. We're going to use the Energy Oracle deck, actually, because we're going to have a look at what your energy was towards them and what their energy was towards you. Because I'm only doing three groups, I want to do person A, person B, just in case you resonate more with the other person. So... Let's get into it, group one. What was person A? What was person A's energy towards person B last time they saw each other? Group one, please, spirit. What was person A's energy? That's a lot, spirit. Can I just get one card? What was person A's energy towards person B last time they saw person B? Please, spirit, group one. What was Fascinating energy. We have Healer of the Ages showing up in the upright posi uh, reverse position. What was person B's energy towards person A last time they saw each other? Spirit. Person B's energy. My lord. Excuse that microphone. It's just hanging on my necklace, so it's going to 
move around a lot, unfortunately. Let me see if I can tighten my necklace real quick. There we go, that's a bit better. Oh wow, so person B's energy towards person A was woman holding a coin. So I can see here that a few things are coming are coming out. What was the connecting energy? Envy reversed with all tied up. So I feel like what's happening here is there is a feeling of trying to make intentions clear to each other. Um, because I feel with envy reversed in the middle, either someone was really trying to impress the other person, especially with a woman holding a coin. It feels like person B was really trying to impress the other person. Um, I think they could have done it better. I think for some of you, you got the impression that this person was showing off or um, person A got the impression that person B was just materially motivated. They weren't actually interested in more of the emotional side or that they were just kind of quite almost selfish in the fact that they wanted to pursue material, um, what's the word, pursuits instead of an emotional pursuit here. I feel like, however, person A had a lot going on last time they saw person B. So person A's energy, they had a lot more that they wanted to show than they wanted to convey to person B. Person A felt like they could have said more and their energy towards person B was that they were dealing with something else outside of the connection that they had to address primarily. Person A felt like they had to kind of come in with a cautious energy and that they had to be very protected of, of, of themselves. I'm picking up an interesting energy from person A. I feel like person A pretended to have it all together, um, but I'm actually getting like a mix of energy. I feel person A was a bit disappointed in how this came together, let alone where it was going. I think person A realized pretty quickly that this situation was not in their control and that it was not going the way that they had hoped it would go. Um, person A kind of felt like, geez, I've got to be very careful around person B. I've got to make sure that I don't show them my weak side. I see person A being in almost a defensive energy. Um, with healer of the ages reversed, person A may have even had boundaries up against person B and was like, you know what? I, I don't think I am ready or I don't think I have this within me right now. I just almost feel like there was this feeling of like, protecting oneself. If you see my hands, I'm like holding these crystals. Normally I just kind of keep them here like that, but I want to sit like this. So I just feel like person A was just struggling. And I think person A has spent enough time working on themselves to know that they are, you know, they have their issues or they have their um, fears and, and they've been healing like with healer of the ages reverse it's like person A thought they were ready for this person A thought that they were healed enough for this and then they were very surprised when they last saw person B that there were things that they still had to work through overcome and technically heal it's almost like they felt a bit frustrated by how much person B's energy bothered them and affected them. I feel like person A was quite rattled. And I think that there were some maybe wrong impressions or regrets that person A has towards person B. I do feel like person B may have tried to do something in this situation to get person A's attention. It may have come across as very conceited or even like a jealous sort of move, like trying to provoke person A's attention by doing something. Um, very flashy towards person A, but I also see with woman holding a coin that person B was trying to kind of flex. They were kind of trying to show their potential to person A. Um, they were trying to show person A that, you know what, like this is what I have to offer. This is what I can give you. And for some of you, this was a very sort of laid back way of doing it. Whereas for others of you, they, this was a very overt way of doing it with envy reverse. There's this feeling here within your group of trying to get the other person's attention and then both of you misreading the other person's intentions. I feel like person B's energy towards person A was like, I'm trying to show you this. I want to impress you, but 
I feel like person A was looking at person B and going, you know what, <laughs> this is too much. Like, have you learned nothing? Because I've been out here trying to gain more growth, wisdom and healing. And you're, you've just been in your bag. Like you've just been focused on material things. And person A may have tried to kind of take the high road by trying to convey someone who's moved on, who's moved forward, who's doing better, maybe not even moved on. Maybe they just tried to show that like on the inside, they were a better person. But person B was like, not convinced is what I want to say with envy reversed. Person B felt like person A was not saying everything. They feel like person A was being very diplomatic, very careful and very cautious. So let's have a look at how people were thinking and feeling now. Okay, spirit. Oopsie daisy. This deck and my own hands are just not working today. There we go. How was person A thinking? When they last saw person B, we have the Ten of Swords upright. We have the Magus reversed. How was person A thinking when they last saw person B? We also have the Four of Pentacles reversed. So I feel like, wait, let's have a look at what person B was thinking. When they last saw person A, what was person B thinking? We have the star reversed. Oh my gosh. What was person B thinking? We have the six of torches upright and the eight of swords reversed. Yeah, let's move these over. Down, 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 down. Okay. So it's interesting because you guys were really judging each other. Like, I don't think you realize that you were both kind of judging each other. You were both looking at each other and making assumptions, drawing conclusions. And I feel like not a lot was positively said. Like, I don't think either of you really got to have a, a conversation that you both wanted with each other. You could have spent hours talking to each other, group one. But I just feel like neither of you really spoke about what you wanted to. We have the night as your connecting energy. So yeah, I feel like there was a lot going on. There was a lot happening under the surface here. With the night, I think of there being difficulties. I think of there being almost sadness, a bit of sorrow, a bit of um, heaviness, and just a feeling of like, I don't have all the information that I need in this situation because it's so dark here. Um, I feel that some of you were able to get peace from this situation, while others of you just felt like this made your whole connection way more confusing. So let's have a look at person A first. With these three cards, person A was thinking, my gosh, this situation is getting really out of hand. Like I feel like person A's thoughts with the Ten of Swords were kind of overwhelming and maybe burdensome, but just certainly final. Like there was something here that happened that made person A go, you know what? I'm kind of at a breaking point here and I don't know how much longer I can just go around this cycle with person B without saying something or without ending something. I felt person A's energy was kind of trying to get release and was hoping for the truth. I feel like person A was expecting person B to say something that would kind of put the nail in the coffin in this relationship. But with the Magus reversed, I think that a lot of that was just a them drawing conclusions. I feel like no sort of honest, helpful, clear, to the point conversations were had especially with the four of pentacles reversed it feels like person a had a very sort of standoffish um, disconnected approach to the situation group one and i feel like person a was just really trying not to appear as invested 
as they had been before, or they were just trying to be very detached here. I genuinely think that person A's mind was preoccupied by something else as well. I feel like person A's mind was kind of betraying them in the way that they were having some very heavy thoughts about something else as well. And I think with the Magus reverse, this was impacting their ability to communicate with you or with person B. So person A was just kind of feeling like, gosh, I just can't get the right words together. Um, for some of you, this person knew that they had left you with the wrong impression. Um, if you resonate as person B, person A genuinely felt after this that like, gosh, I've left person B with the wrong impression. That was their thoughts. Let's have a look at person B's thoughts towards person A. We have more swords over here. So the two of you were kind of having this inner dialogue while you were around each other, while you saw each other, you were having your thoughts, your own sort of conversations and reflections along the way. We have the star reverse, the six of torches upright and this eight of swords. So I feel spirit saying that person B's energy here was very focused on trying to change your perception about something. Person B was very focused on how you saw them and person B was trying to kind of undo something here, an impression that they gave you or they were picking up on the fact that your energy was withdrawing so I feel like they were trying to make you see them differently it feels like someone who has something to prove it's almost like maybe some of you called person B out before and so person B came back and was like hey person A look what I'm doing now um person B just felt like with the star card reverse that they had to kind of convey something to person A and person B was feeling like they had to almost be someone that they're not actually on the inside. Like they had to wear a persona with the star card reversed. It's giving me individuality blocked. I feel like person B almost felt like they had to put themselves into some kind of role play thing. They were feeling very disconnected from their authentic self, but it felt like they were doing this to try to be successful in, in winning you over and how you see them. With the Six of Torches upright, this person was thinking that they were doing a good job. Person B thought that they, whatever you know they had got going on, their confidence was trying to maintain a high sort of level where they were noticing um, person B's kind of, awareness of them changing. I feel like person B felt more seen by person A last time the two of you were together. Person B felt like person A is noticing me more with the six of torches. They feel a sense of accomplishment and victory here, which is so interesting. I also think with the eight of swords reverse that person B's sort of got themselves out of a, a victim mentality and I think that they were trying to embody more of like a boss, you know, like someone who is the hero, the savior. I'm not a victim. I'm a hero. I got myself out of this. Um, definitely felt like they had a lot to prove. Is there anything else we can tell group one? What does person B thinking spirit? I feel like they weren't being completely honest because when we have an eight of swords reversed, it almost regresses into a seven of swords moment. So I do feel like person B's energy wasn't completely honest, especially with the star reverse. They could have been more authentic in how they represented themselves. Let's move forward. We're going to switch decks just in case we get repeating cards. What was group one's energy in terms of feelings spirit let's have a look group one what was group one let's start with person a we're going to have a look at feelings now what was person a's feelings towards person b last time they saw each other person a's feelings towards person b interesting what was person A's feelings? Okay. What was person B's feelings towards person A? Last time they saw each other. What was person B's feelings towards person A? Last time they saw each other. 
What was person B's feelings? Ooh, it's icy here. Ice cold. Not a lot of feelings. <laughs> Not a lot of feelings. Oh man, this is icy. The back of the deck, we have the two of swords reverse. So my Lord, the feelings, this is, this is your, this is your connecting energy. Look, the king of cups under that and but underneath your thoughts, you had the page of cups. So I want to say that the last time you saw each other, you really tried to maintain this front and it resonated through your heart chakra. It resonated through your emotional being, through the point of your feelings for each other were very far removed. I see with the two of swords reverse that most of you, your connecting energy here, the two of you were just trying to maybe keep an open mind while also having reservations. Like there still feels like there's baggage based on a previous meeting that impacted the way that you two came together last time. Your feelings here were very logical. Like you were controlling your feelings with the way that you were thinking and with the way that you were speaking. I feel like especially person A, there's a strong feeling of restriction here and caution. Whereas person B, you just feel so cold, so cold. They're recognizing that there is a lack of emotional connectivity. So person B is like purposefully icing out person A. Let's have a look at person A's energy towards person B in terms of feelings. We have the three of swords reversed, the two of pentacles reversed, and the page of pentacles reversed. You know what this gives me? This tells me that person A was acting slightly petty towards person B. They were behaving in a somewhat immature way, but that's only because they were being triggered by an old wound here. The three of swords reversed. It feels like person A was feeling triggered by a previous pain or some other sort of painful issue. And it was being kind of forced to the surface to the point where any other feelings for person B could not be felt. They had to instead focus on this pain and numbing it and dealing with it and trying to process it whilst connecting with person B. With the two of pentacles reversed, person A was being so careful to kind of juggle this painful feeling, this trigger with what was happening in front of them. And they felt like they weren't doing a good job. They felt like their feelings were getting the better of them. And they honestly felt like they had to remain practical and logical in the situation. Person A was feeling like, geez, when it comes to person B, I've just got to treat this as something that is too much right now to deal with and to prioritize. I feel like person A was trying to prioritize other things in this meeting. And they may not have been especially kind or especially accommodating towards person B's energy. They may have had to really sort of put up some boundaries here is what I'm seeing and make it clear to person B that like, actually I don't have time to, to deal with this or to listen to everything that you've been doing. I've got to focus on my three of swords issue right now with the page of pentacles reversed. I do think that person A handled this situation somewhat immaturely okay because a page of pentacles is someone who's acting younger or less mature than they actually are it's like they've outgrown the situation and i think that that's the case if you resonate as person a i feel like you genuinely believed that you outgrew this person or this situation and that the last time you saw this person you you almost weren't expecting to see them. It feels like person A was not expecting to see person B. And so they just kind of had to juggle their, themselves, their triggers, their heavy feelings, their heavy thoughts. Um, and with the page of pentacles reversed, they also just had to juggle this, this behavior that they were experiencing within themselves. So let's have a look at person B's energy towards person A. We have the five of swords upright, the queen of swords upright and the high priestess reverse. So I'll be honest, person B was definitely playing a game. It feels like person B was playing more of a mind game with person A. They were really out of touch with the situation. It gives me that feeling of like, read the room. 
you know, and person B was just kind of like not picking up the vibe that person A was putting out. Person A was trying to say like, hey, I've got a lot going on right now. My life is crazy and it's not necessarily about you. I just wasn't expecting to see you right now. Um, my priorities are elsewhere. I've got other things to deal with. And person B was kind of like, okay, cool. That's cool. Well, um, I'm just going to talk like this and I'm just going to do this and I'm blah, blah, blah. And kind of just like, trying to portray this confident, successful person, while person A was like, I really don't have time for this. I see that person B was feeling somewhat um, conflicted because I think that person B approached the situation. It could even be that person B reached out to person A, but person B was, was hoping for a lot more than what they got. So person B was feeling very cut with the five of swords upright. I wouldn't be surprised if person B was feeling almost like jaded and kind of like, well, that was your last chance, person A. I feel like with the high priestess reversed, person A, a person B, excuse me, is still quite confused about how they truly feel about person A because they almost feel like they don't know how to feel at this point. Their mind is, is running with thoughts and they're going off what they see and they see someone who's pulling away from them. They see someone who's not wanting to engage with them. So they're having to kind of just take what they see for gospel right now and, and follow that. I think with the Queen of Swords upright, person B had to force themselves to stop feeling some type of way, um, whether that was jaded or whether that was positive because person B just felt like their emotions were almost wasted on person A in this moment. They felt like they they weren't getting the whole picture. So the best thing they could do was get in the defense position and just kind of ice the situation out and remove their feelings from the situation. It's so interesting because it doesn't feel like either of you truly had the chance to tell each other what you wanted to in that moment. And despite person B feeling so confident and so sort of heroic, right? Instead of like a victim, they still feel like they didn't quite get to say or do everything that they wanted to do and say towards person A. So let's get some closing advice. Actually, no, we're going to get some channeled messages. We're going to get some channeled messages because I need to know more. It doesn't feel like, it feels like we've barely scratched the surface here. Maybe this is resonating a lot more for you, but for me personally, I'm quite frustrated with how this last <laughs> meeting went between the two of you. Spirit, what does person A wish they said to person B? <gasps> this is what person A wishes they said to person B. I just want you all the time and you matter. Person A wishes they told person B that they're going through a cycle right now and they need time to prioritize that aspect of their life. That doesn't mean they don't care or that doesn't mean that they don't respect or that doesn't mean that they don't have care and respect for person B. But it just feels like they, they kind of wish they told you if you resonate as person B, that you do matter. Um, person A wishes they had the chance to tell them healthily that they just need space to heal. I feel like person A really just needed space to heal 100%. That's the six of swords. So person A wishes they told person B that there was a lot of chemistry. There was a lot going on in their life, a lot of movement happening, a lot of cycles happening simultaneously, um, a lot of energy happening simultaneously, at least when they saw person B last time. They wanted to tell person B, you do still matter to me or you do matter to me full stop. Um, but I just need space right now to heal. I just need space to prioritize other aspects of my life right now. And that means that I need to move away from you for now. For some of you, that's what the situation was. What does person B wish they told person A, please, spirit? Person B wishes they told person A that I left because you told me to. You iced me out first. That's why I'm not speaking to you is what person B is saying. You gave me the impression that you didn't have time for me, that you didn't want to see me, that you didn't want to share feelings with me. So now I'm doing the same to you. What does person B wish they said to person A? 
I want to first start with you. Person A, person B definitely feels a bit jaded. Person B is feeling like, why did we even try then? Like, what a waste of energy. Person B doesn't understand. There's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of what actually happened here in their head. Um, to person B, they feel like the situation was a huge false start. They feel like they wasted energy. What is person B's wish they would have said to person A? Listen, at the end of the day, person B was feeling like, person A, you were someone so very special to me. Person B wishes they said to person A, we've already invested so much. Is this really how you want to end things? Person B wishes they said to person A, is this the end? They, they wish things were more clear here because this is the world card. So it feels like the situation was culminating and person B just didn't know how to take that. Person B was feeling very confused to say the least. And I feel like they wish they said to person A, what do you want? Like, where do we go from here? Is this the end? Do you genuinely care? Because I need you to know that you are very special to me. Like I actually saw something happening here. Is this a false start or is this just a temporary um, release? Interesting. Let's get your closing advice now, shall we? I might just reset my camera, group one, to close your reading. Okay, group one, please, spirit. What is the closing advice for group one? What is the closing advice for group one? What is the closing advice for group one? Oh my God, that is so annoying. What is the closing advice for group one? Okay, at the back of the deck, we have choice here. So I feel like regardless of whether you're person A or person B, you need to realize that in this situation, you always have a choice, right? And in your situation with this person moving forward, you are going to have to be more aware of how your actions at any given moment, sweets, do impact your reality and do impact the future. Nothing is technically final, I would say, unless you make things very final. But ambiguity leads to a lot of confusion. And in the case of this connection, the two of you definitely need to be clearer towards each other. You definitely need to be more aware of each other's energy and how you convey specific energy to each other. Whoever you resonate as, whether you're a person A or person B, it feels like you both need to be more mindful of how your choices impact how the other person is feeling especially if this is an ending or especially if this is something that's trying to get off the ground right um, you need to be very clear with your boundaries if you want an ending um, with your boundaries if you want a new beginning with your interest if you want an ending and your interest if you want a new beginning we also have make here so i feel like spirit is saying as you move forward in this connection you have a lot of opportunity to continue making something with whoever or whatever you want but your actions here seem to be something that spirit is highlighting what you choose to do and how you choose to act and what you choose to make and invest your energy into is going to directly impact the outcome of the situation if you want a future with this person you have to make time for them if you want a future with this person you have to make your intentions clear to them if you don't want a future with this person you have to make that intention clear you have to be more aware of your actions seems to be the recurring message we also have fear and anxiety which came out for your group so i see here group one that spirit's main advice for you has a lot to do with how you handle yourself and your energy when it comes to frustrations, sadness, fear, anxiety, anxiousness, nervousness, and how you channel that to be a better authentic version of yourself in any 
given situation. As you move forward in this connection with this person or, or in separation, it's important that you understand how these things are controlling your actions. Because while they are completely, unfortunately, very natural, right? We all experience these things to a certain degree. Some of us actually have anxiety disorders and mood disorders, while others of us just naturally, our instincts influence anxiousness and fear. We have to be able to control them enough to ensure that we are in control of that situation and that our fear and our anxiety isn't controlling our actions in that situation. Regardless of whether you want a future with this person or not, ensure that you aren't leaving any loose ends as you move forward due to anxiousness, nervousness or fear. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group one, when it comes to what was your person thinking and feeling last time they saw you. I'm going to take this into the extended now so we can delve deeper. In your extended reading, group one, we're going to have a look at what has your person learned since they last saw you. We're going to do person A, person B again, just to be very clear. And then we're going to have a look at what they hope for in terms of the future of this connection. I think I just want to get more advice from Spirit too. We may get channeled messages. We'll see what, where your reading goes because I really just want the extended reading to be informative but healing, especially for your group. So we'll see where we go. But those are the two main things we're focusing on, the your person's hopes for the future of this connection. And then also we're going to be looking at what they have learned since they last saw you. So if you're interested in joining me in the extended group one, the link will be in the description box below. If this reading resonated, you're welcome to join me over there. Um, before you go, wherever you're going, even if you're not following me over there, I just wanna thank you so much for tuning in today, group one. Thank you for exchanging your energy and your time. I appreciate all of your support and I'm gonna connect with you in another video. Bye. Hi group two and welcome to your reading. If you chose this flower agate over here or the she-wolf tarot deck, I nearly forgot, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome group two. We're asking spirit today, what were they thinking and feeling last time they saw you? So I'm going to start by getting energies for both you and your person, referring to you and your person as person A, person B. And we'll just go from there, looking at person A's thoughts and feelings, person B's thoughts and feelings. There's going to be advice and channeled messages as well. Um, and there's also going to be an extended reading. So if this reading does resonate and you do want further insight, you can join me in the extended afterwards if you wish. Okay, now as wonderful as this tarot deck is, we're not actually using it first. We're going to be using oracle cards to have a look at you and your person's energy. So starting with person A, please spirit. The last time they saw each other, what was person A's energy towards person B? What was person A's energy towards person B for group two? We have goddess of the moon coming out, number 52. What was person B's energy towards person A? We have third chakra archangel Chamuel coming out. Chamuel, interesting. We also have appreciation, man holding a heart, victory. Okay, strategy reversed, yeah. Something about this last meeting could have been somewhat spontaneous. Okay, your connecting energy is the healer of the ages. That card's been coming out a lot. Something about this energy, it feels either spontaneous or it just wasn't planned. Group two, I feel like the two of you didn't exactly plan to see each other. Um, and I believe with healer of the ages in the middle, there was a lot of potential here to actually get something off the ground with one another. Um, I feel like there were certain like I could have done more especially on both sides in different ways but with healer of the ages I also feel like you both respectively felt like you made progress in some way um I feel like healer of the ages is telling me that the conjoining energy here meant that you both felt like the connection was still moving in the right direction even if it wasn't moving at a pace that 
you both wanted, even if you think that there's more that you could have done or said or, or shown, I still feel with Healer of the Ages in the middle, like you still felt like this connection was moving forward positively. So I want to have a look at person A here. It's interesting because Healer of the Ages is the number 51 and person A's energy towards person B is Goddess of the Moon number 52. So I see person A being in a very intuitive energy, trying to feel out person B. Person A was really just trying to understand how they felt about person B and what they kind of wanted and felt about the situation. I feel like person A may have come into this meeting with some preconceived feelings and um, predictions maybe of like things that they had intuitively expected to happen and they were almost sitting there waiting for it to happen like watching person be like are they going to do it yet are they going to say it yet like when are they going to do it it feels like person a may be the one that's more kind of into tarot readings um and the one who has been getting predictions or intuitive hits about their person and they were expecting person B to do something towards them. I feel with the goddess of the moon that this also put person A in a very mysterious energy where person B felt like they couldn't get a good read on person A. Person A's energy towards person B came across as very elusive, a little safeguarded um, and just difficult to read. I also feel with goddess of the moon here that person A may have been in more of like a receiving energy and just kind of observant, but not obvious. Like I don't see person A staring at person B the entire time that they, that the two of you saw each other. I feel like person A would have been more kind of careful, expectant, but not obvious subtlety with the goddess of the moon here keeping secrets and receiving intuitive hits over what they expected to happen while person b person b feels a very like a very different energy person b may also watch tarot readings but person b was like cheese like i wasn't expecting this to happen person b feels like this situation did not go according to plan Person B was definitely wanting to do something, but I feel like ultimately with the solar plexus third chakra reversed, person B didn't get that opportunity. And I feel like person B may have even shut down and may have even backed out. Person B's actions and energy towards person A feels very guarded because they're picking up on a guarded energy here. And although Person B is per maybe less intuitive or maybe just not as intuitively aware because the truth is we're all intuitive beings. I still believe that person B's energy towards person A was that of someone who is in defense mode and also protection mode because they either weren't expecting it to happen the way that the two of you did last see each other or... They just felt like things weren't going according to plan. I'm also getting for some of you that person B feels like they ran out of time. Like what they had planned to do wasn't possible anymore and that they ran out of time. I feel like person B over here um, did have high hopes. I see that with the third chakra. They were wanting things and sort of feeling a certain um, need to make things happen a certain way, but definitely feeling blocked here in terms of action, in terms of determination, in terms of willpower, even in terms of courage for some of you. Person B's energy just feels very, and I see that they may have beaten themselves up about that. Person B feels like person A makes them feel very weak. And it's not a bad feeling if this is a crush, or an, uh, someone who you're romantically involved with, like I'm getting very sacral chakra, passionate energy that 
puts this person in more of like a feminine energy of receptivity and feeling when they actually want to be more driven, motivated and action orientated with masculine energy. So regardless of gender, this person felt more inspired by the receptivity and mystery of person A um, to the point where they something did not go according to plan in terms of actions. I'm just going to have a quick sip of water, you guys, and let's have a look at your feelings. Excuse me? Thoughts. We'll have a look at thoughts first. Okay, so let's bring that back, that beautiful tarot deck. For group two, please, spirit. Flower agate is one of my favorite crystals. I only have one, and it's a little boy or a little girl, maybe. No, nah, it feels like a, feels like a beautiful masculine energy. Um, but it's one of my favorite crystals, that little one. Um, okay, spirit. Group two. How was for group two's last time they saw their person? How was person A thinking about group about? <laughs> How was person A thinking about person B? There we go. High Priestess reversed. Yeah. A lot of feminine energy over here. High Priestess, Goddess of the Moon. What was person B thinking about person A the last time they saw each other? What was person B thinking? Ace of Cups. Wow. Can I get another card for person A's thoughts towards person B? Person A, please, Spirit. Person A, their thoughts towards person B. Person A, please, Spirit. What was person A's thoughts towards person B? Hi, we have the King of Swords. I'm hearing the Stoic King of Swords. May I please get another... Dang. Dang. Okay, we're going to take all of these. There's a little story over here and I've got to tell you about it. May I please get more cards for person B? What was person B's thoughts towards person A the last time they saw each other, please, spirit? Thank you. all Okay. At the back of the deck, we do have the nine of swords reversed. So this is your connecting thoughts. I feel like both of you tried to make the most out of the situation that you were together. Both of you had some sort of epiphany. Both of you had some sort of awareness of each other. Um, you had mental clarity. One of you had more regrets than the other, that's for sure. Um, there was this feeling of, dang, is it too late? So for some of you, if this is a crush situation, maybe you didn't realize like, how interested the other person was until the last time you saw them. That's one message that I'm getting. It's not going to apply to all of you because I'm trying to keep it general just in case you're asking about someone who isn't a romantic interest. But I see with the Nine of Swords reversed that there is this feeling of hindsight, like a realization after an action that was regretted happened, like a regrettable action. So I believe that what's happening here is you both realized at the same time, maybe the same idea, um, but one person feels like they have more to kind of own up to here in terms of I could have, would have, should have done more. Now, person A's energy, they were thinking that they had it all figured out with person B. Person A with the high priestess reverse, they thought that they knew something about person B and then when it didn't happen, person A started to feel like, gosh, I can't trust myself anymore. I can't trust my intuition. I can't trust my abilities if they, if person A is an intuitive or psychic sort of person. And person A was feeling like, how did I get this wrong? I see with the high priestess reverse, person A's thoughts were a little unsettling and they tried to ground themselves in their intuition to combat those unsettling thoughts. I believe though, with the high priestess reversed, the main energy I'm getting is I can't trust myself anymore. How did I get this wrong? We have the king of swords. So I believe that person, person A was really in their head the last time the two of you saw each other. Person A was thinking a lot being very careful about stealing glances with person B, being very intentional with their actions, with their communication, if there was any. Person A was being very strategic here in terms of 
their actions and reactions to person B. And I see that this could have been their downfall in some ways, like objectively, I feel like person A was very in their head expecting something to happen, um, which kind of meant that they were not in the moment acting as though you know, it's just unfolding in front of them. It's almost like they were watching a movie and they're like, oh, this is my favorite part. I love it when this happens. And then the part didn't happen in person A. It's like, what? <laughs> like, what? Um, I see person A being very like, yeah, secretive. Um, I'm hearing disturbingly secretive. So it was quite frustrating for person B to feel that energy. But anyway, we also have Chariot, Five of Cups reversed, and Three of Swords upright. So I see that Person A was thinking that Person B is someone that is going to either take action or there's going to be a lot of positive forward movement here in this connection this time. Person A was expecting a positive development and they were thinking about positive developments here. I think that person A's motivations were that of more of um, an emotional place of this is what I feel. Um, and I'm thinking about my feelings and I'm thinking that my feelings are telling me this. And I'm thinking that my feelings are hinting towards this. And my feelings are telling me that it's going to move forward like this. And with the three of swords, it's like person A was expecting person B to be someone who was going to help them overcome a feeling of loss or disappointment or sadness or just kind of a challenging emotional situation. Person A was thinking that person B is going to help me kind of move forward and give me more support, if not clarity. Now, I think that person A definitely got clarity, but I also see that person A got very confused at the same time. I feel like there were some moments where person A was able to think like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then there were other moments where person A was so used to watching the situation like a movie that they kind of missed those cues to act and react. Like this is your life, you're the main character, you're not watching somebody else's movie, this is your movie. Um, this, is your, this is your cue. The director's saying like, it's your cue, it's time to act. So it's an interesting feeling here. Let's have a look at person B. Person B's thoughts on person A, the last time you saw each other. Person B was really developing um, a sense of like, I want an emotional opportunity. I want a new emotional opportunity with person A. I see that person B was definitely in their feels, where person A was in their feels and in their head. Person B was in their feels without thinking about it. It's like they just kind of came into awareness of how they feel um, in the moment. I feel like person B was more present, but they were picking up a very confusing energy from person A. And I feel like person B with the Ace of Cups was overall feeling very positive and they were thinking positively. They were thinking like, wow, this is someone who um, I want an opportunity with. But with the five of pentacles reversed, is that what we need now? Is that what I need now? Um, I feel like person B was thinking, is this going to be a situation that makes my life better? Or is this going to be a situation that makes my life more challenging? Because I think that person B's thoughts were also on, should I start making more serious actions towards person A, especially with the eight of pentacles here. It's like person B was realizing that their interest in person A is more emotional than they were expecting. And then they started to think, well, at what point do I start taking more serious action? At what point do I start investing more hard work into this? Person B was definitely looking at person A as someone that they want to kind of put more effort towards and create more sort of um, quality moments together in terms of investing quality time. But I also feel that person B with the five of pentacles reversed still has somewhat of a fear of rejection. And they were thinking of that. What if person A rejects me because I can't get a good reading on them? I can't truly feel or figure out how they feel about me. So 
And for those who resonate as, this isn't going to apply to all of you, but for those who resonate as being person A and, and you told person B, like, I have feelings for you, the last time they saw you, they were still feeling like, are we ready though? Um, do they mean that? Because they see you as someone that's very secretive. So even if you say something to this person, the last time they saw you, they still felt like you were holding a lot of secrets, like you were withholding yourself um, to a certain degree in an expectant, intimidating way, because they feel like you are definitely able to pick up on things that they can't. They may not know the extent of your intuition and your intuitive abilities, but this person definitely gets an ethereal vibe from you and they feel like you are very tuned in. So let's have a look at your feelings towards each other. How was person A feeling about person B last time they saw each other? How was person A feeling about person B? Okay, I'm seeing skepticism here. Person A, I'll show you those cards when we talk about them, okay, sweets? What about person B? What was person B's feelings towards person A when they last saw each other? What was person B's feelings for person A? We have the Knight of Swords. What was person B's feelings for person A when they last saw each other, spirit? We have... The two of cups reversed. What was person B's feelings for person A when they last saw each other? We have the three of cups upright. At the back of the deck, we have the four of swords reversed as you're joining energy here in terms of feelings. So let me just make sure that all of these cards are in frame. Love it, love it. Okay, let's talk about the joining energy first. So Group two, I see that with the four of swords reversed, you were both kind of testing the waters with each other tentatively. There was definitely a feeling of no one's going to take initiative, but we're going to be receptive and we're just going to kind of test the waters and warm up to each other. Even if the last time you saw each other, maybe you were, maybe you actually had gone out together. I still feel like it was this lukewarm feeling <laughs> where things didn't really heat up. Um, there were inspiring moments. There were definitely moments that had you both going, oh, I felt something there or, oh, that's going to leave me reflecting reflecting about it before bed tonight. But I think that at the same time with the four of swords reversed, there was still a feeling of, we can't rush this. We're slowly reanimating and we're still developing information on how we truly feel. I feel like neither of you were a hundred percent sure of how you felt the last time you saw each other. Like your feelings were just kind of in a very analytical, slow moving energy. Now, person A over here has the four of wands reversed, seven of swords upright, and the queen of swords reversed. So person A, as intuitive and receptive as this person is, they were hiding a lot. They were not wanting to get in their feels in terms of in their heart space. They were trying to get into their feels in terms of their third eye chakra, their intuition, and how they were intuitively feeling. I feel like person A was feeling quite unsettled because things did not go the way they were expecting, because something did not play out as they intuitively predicted. With the four of wands reversed, this person was feeling out of their comfort zone. Person A was kind of taking a lot of notes here. And I feel like person A was looking at the situation in a very analytical way, um, in a very subjective way. I'm getting that in terms of feelings. Person A was feeling like they weren't getting the whole picture. Person A was feeling like they had to kind of hyper fixate on certain things. So I feel like person A thinks that they got a good view, but I'm seeing that they really didn't. I'm seeing that person A missed a lot of cues, a lot of social cues is what I'm hearing. They missed a lot of opportunities to communicate openly and they came across as being very guarded. It's all, that's the main energy that I'm seeing. Queen of Swords reversed. It's like person A may have tried to take initiative at some point here, 
But even then, the initiative was very calculated and, and trickery, like trickstery with the Seven of Swords. It's almost like person A was feeling like they had to kind of sneakily steal glances without getting caught, without catching feelings, or without being giving the illusion or, or the full sort of impression that they had some type of feelings for person B, especially if this is a new crush. I could see how person A was trying to kind of steal glances or just kind of observe person B without wanting person B to see them. And person B was picking up on that vibe. Person B was fully like, what's going on over there? <laughs> like person A is a whole vibe and I just can't figure them out. They're so confusing. They're so secretive. What are they hiding? What are they trying to sneak away from? I feel like person... A may have even tried to play hard to get, or that's how it came across. But the feelings here are, are not here. It's like person A was saying, like, it's not a time to feel. It's a time to observe, collect data, collect information, and just don't get caught. And it's like, what? Whereas person B was actually a lot more in their feels. Person B was looking at person A like, oh wow, like I'm, I'm feeling a rush of emotion here. I'm feeling like I actually missed this person, especially if you hadn't seen each other in a while. The last time person B saw person A, they were feeling like things were changing internally for person A. Person B was feeling rushed though with the Knight of Swords and I don't think they coped with that pressure well with the solar plexus chakra reverse they ultimately chose not to act but they were feeling inspired to take quick almost impulsive action hasty action they were feeling rushed by the situation um it's quite likely that person a eventually just snuck away without saying goodbye to person b and person b felt betrayed by that um, not in a heavy sense not like you owe them anything if you're person a but person b felt that with the two of cups reverse there's an obvious feeling of separation here from person b's side of the two of you not being on the same page with the two of cups reverse they felt like you two had obvious differences and i'm not gonna lie person b saw some red flags i use that word lightly they saw some things that made them go wait a minute <laughs> back up a second like this is a bit of an issue we have to talk about this if we take this further um, i need to know more about this if we choose to take this further i've got some questions about this if we choose to take this further with the three of cups upright i feel that ultimately though person b was feeling a real sort of sense of connection with person a and if this is someone that you don't know well at the very least they were hoping to get to know you better they were hoping to build more of like a friendship and to close some of that emotional distance by spending more time together even if it's in a group situation um, but i feel like at the very least yeah regardless of whether this is a crush uh, significant other a friend or whoever you're asking about sweets Person B was feeling like their emotions were growing for person A. They were feeling positively. And I feel like they were enjoying person A's company altogether. Um, but I also feel like they wanted more of person A's time. Um, what else is going on with that three of cups spirit for person B? Their feelings towards person A. If there was a separation or there still is and you haven't seen this person since then i feel like that's what they kind of were left with is this three of cups feeling of i need to be able to spend more time with person a to explore my feelings for them and if you came across as very kind of covert and a secretive and a bit trickstery it did give them the impression that maybe you're not prioritizing them in the way that they are wanting to prioritize you right because person b is looking at this situation as i'm ready to put in the hard work but is it worth it because there's signs from person a that they don't see the potential that i do and i feel like there's a very practical side to person um, B that has them looking at things on a very physical level um, actions equal intentions you know and so if they don't see a certain type of action then they believe that person's intention isn't there um, let's get some channeled messages we're going to do this for both people 
just in case. So person A, please spirit, what did person A want to say to person B? What did person A want to say to person B? Ooh, they. Anything else? Okay. This is sneaky. Sweet pea, this is sneaky. We have I want to get you drunk. The number 15 is your bottom deck energy. Let's talk about person A first, because I'm 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 kind of, yeah. We have the seven of swords reversed with the ace of swords. Wow. Okay. So person A, they, they, to be honest with you, sweets, with these two cards coming out, I feel like person A had no intention of initiating a conversation with person B. Person A was almost waiting to receive confirmation or conversation from person B. Person A was like, when is person B going to talk to me? When is person B going to reach out? Um, I, I believe, believe that person, person A regretted, regretted this decision, decision with the Ace of Swords reverse. It's, it's like, geez, I wish I, I didn't. I wish I would have just kind of put more initiative in. Um, what, what do they, they wish they said? said? Honestly, they wish they said anything. I feel, I feel like person A wishes wish they, they said anything with the Ace of Swords reverse because I'm feeling like they didn't say anything. I feel with the Seven of Swords reverse, person A wishes they weren't so secretive, especially if you were person A and you're watching this reading now. I feel like person A in hindsight wishes that they were a bit more forthcoming with their actions, with their intentions, and with they with what they wanted to say, um, because it feels like it just came across very sneaky. And I'm seeing here with these cards, like we have, I want to start a family with you, and that's the Ten of Pentacles with the um, Two of Swords reverse. So I feel like Person A has the same intentions as person B in the sense of wanting something long term or worthy of putting hard work into in terms of a connection here but I also feel like person person A wishes they would have made that clearer with this ten of pentacles here and with the two of swords reverse it's like they wish they would have been more decisive um, and less indecisive less stuck in their head I'm seeing the Six of Cups and the Think Before You Act card. So I feel like Person A wishes that they had told Person B um, more about how they feel. Or at the very least, the Six of Cups is about offering a kind gesture. So I feel like if Person A didn't talk to Person B at all, they at the very least wish that they had said hello and that they had smiled and that they had been more kind of warm. I'm going to reset the camera real quick because it feels like person A came across as very cold to person B or very selectively communicative and expressive. I think that person A wishes they had been less in their head and just more sort of in the moment. So how, what does person B wish they said to person A? What does person B wish they said to person A? What does person B wish they said? Okay, anything else, Spirit? Thank you. Okay, so at the back of the deck, we have that Four of Swords reversed again. There is that feeling of like, would have, could have, should have. Nine of Swords reversed, Four of Swords reversed. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about these first. First of all, Person B is at the point where they wish they would have just asked person A straight out, like, do you see me that way? Like, do you have any feelings for me? Do you, I'm getting a really confusing vibe from you, person A. Like, what do you think of me? Um, I feel like person B is so confused right now with the seven of cups. They wish they knew, they wish they would have asked more questions so that they could have more answers around the vibe in this connection. I feel like person B wishes that they, I mean, to be honest with you, person B spent a lot of time afterwards thinking about all the things that could have, would have, should have happened. With the Nine of Swords, this person was so overwhelmed with a sense of regret that they may have tried to even numb that feeling by just kind of distracting themselves with some sort of intense hobby. Like I'm seeing someone just in the gym, like just trying to pump weights like they're <laughs> 
getting out of their feels with every rep, you know, or I'm seeing someone like sculling a, a beer and just like trying to numb that feeling of regret because there is a feeling of hindsight with this nine of swords coming back again, person B wished that they would have asked more questions to get more clear messages and answers over how you or person A was feeling because person B was just like, what the heck, what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right, what's real. I'm also seeing now is not the time and four of pentacles reversed. So I feel like person B wishes that they had made their intentions more clear because person B feels like this connection is moving in an awkward energy like the movement between the two of you is either moving too quickly like because person b is feeling very rushed or they're at a point where they have to try to actively slow this connection down because they're not comfortable with the pace that this connection is moving in um overall Maybe it's going too slow, maybe it's going too fast, but for all of you, person B is not comfortable with the pace this connection is going in. They're feeling like the timing here is out for some reason. And I think with the four of pentacles reversed, person B wishes they made it clearer to person A that they are ready to take meaningful action now if necessary. Sorry, group two, apparently my memory card got full, so I had to delete some old footage off my camera and I also turned the fan on really low because I started sweating. So if there's like mild audio interference, that's what it is. But listen, it's life's too short to sweat. That's my motto. So <laughs> I will try to scrub up the audio if the fan is that noisy. So let's continue where we were. I kind of lost my train of thought, not even going to lie, but I do remember talking about these cards. I don't want to lose you. This person wishes they were less sort of caught up. Like this person, group group two, person B felt like their throat chakra just kind of went and their solar plexus chakra just went and they were just kind of standing there like, what do I do? What do I say? Um, so much pressure. Um, why isn't person A saying enough? Like I can feel them hiding things. Like maybe this isn't the right time. I definitely feel like person B wants more answers, sweets. Person B is like feeling like they're very in the dark. Like person B is feeling like they're completely in the dark with person A. We also have words do hurt in the reverse. So I feel like person A is at the point where they're like, I don't care if you reject me like at this point. I don't care if you said like, I don't have feelings for you. I just wish you would have said something. I feel like person B wishes that they would have had that difficult conversation and even been rejected as long as that would have given them clarity because person B is at the point where they're just like I don't know anymore like I really don't know if you even see me that way so let's get some advice spirit what is the advice here for group two what is the advice group two between them and their person what is the advice okay what is the advice here please spirit between group two and their person what is the advice okay what is the advice yeah that's so true oh spirit just make it easy please don't be what is the advice okay at the back of the deck suites, you have support. So Spirit has a few messages. I feel like this was a learning experience for the whole group, regardless of whether you're person A or person B. Support as your back deck energy is saying that this is about your feelings. This is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. It's very nine of cups vibes, even though there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards here, seven cups here on this card. It feels like the main advice here from spirit is when you want something, when you have a dream, when you feel like something becomes more of a wish or a hope or a dream and you're emotionally invested 
There is this feeling here of supporting your dreams by giving and receiving the right amount of energy into that moment. You can't just be 100% receptive. You have to know how to temper your energy to be able to support your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, to be able to support your emotional interest, your best emotional interest. And I feel that that is where this situation failed. The two of you were not tempered. Um, one person was very receptive and shut down and the other person was feeling confused and shut down. So I feel like that is what that card is, is, is saying is, is being able to temper your energy to know when to give and when, and to, when receive. to receive, not just, not just to be both, to be both at a standstill, standstill where it's like, it's like well, what, do what do we do now? now? Now, in terms, in terms of this connection, this connection we have begin and, begin and power reverse. So the thing, thing about you and this person is you're both, you're both treating, treating this connection like it's, like it's a power struggle. struggle and, it's and it's kind of like, like well, who takes, takes initiative first? first. Um, um, it's not my turn, turn, it's your turn. Well, you're, well, you're the masculine. masculine. You're, you're supposed to do it. Well, actually, like you're the one who thinks they know it all, so you're supposed to do it. I feel like at the end of the day, you reap what you sow. And that doesn't come down to who's the masculine, who's the feminine. In this situation, and moving, moving forward, forward with whatever it is that your heart, your heart wants, wants you, have you have to know how to, how to balance, balance both masculine, masculine, masculine and feminine energies within you to be able to create those initiative moments, moments and follow up with that even give and take. Power, power reverse is telling me that the situation wasn't supposed to be about a power struggle of who's going to do this first and whose turn is it to do that and well you're supposed to do this and I'm supposed to do that. This, this preconceived, preconceived notion is what ultimately caused your last interaction with this person to fall apart. And that's what ultimately led to a lot of healing and a lot of growth on both sides, which is something we'll look at in the extended. With begin reversed, there is a false start here. It's not all lost, but spirit is saying that the two of you do need to be able to move forward, healing, learning, and gaining wisdom from what this last meeting taught you both, whether the lessons are very profound or whether, or whether some of you are just able to go okay, okay i'm not going to do that again done, done check, check ready, ready to move forward, forward. I, feel I feel like the goal here is to use your last interaction, interaction with this person to, to heal and learn enough, enough to know, to know that, that whenever you're, you're faced with a similar situation, situation whether it's the same person or a different person, person you are able to take enough action for your best intention for your best emotional outcome for your highest good essentially um Move, move on, on is indicating to me that, that you guys need to stop stewing on this last interaction, interaction. <laughs> especially if you're person B. If you're person A, you do need to be more present and in the moment and forward moving. Um, you both need to be able to move beyond what happened last in order to be able to healthily move forward. Um, this, this connection, connection is salvageable. Is salvageable. That's, That's what I want to tell you based on your current energy. energy. But, obviously but obviously there's a lot to learn from in terms of what happened last time on both sides of the fence. So group two, that's what I'm seeing for you when it comes to the last time your person saw you. I'm going to take this into the extended now where we're going to have a look at what you've both learned since you last saw each other. And we're going to have a look at, excuse me, my mind is blank what they hope will happen in the future of this connection. I'm also going to pull channel messages to look at what your next conversation with this person is going to be like. And then we're going to get a lot more advice in the extended as well. So if this reading resonated and you would like to join me in the extended reading, the link will be in the description box. I shall see you there. Before you go group two, wherever you're going, whether you choose to join me in the extended or another video or not at all, I just want to thank you for all your energy, your time and your support. Thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube and I hope to connect with you in another video. Bye. Hi group three and welcome to your reading. If you chose this snowflake obsidian crystal over here or the tarot del toro deck, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome. We're asking spirit today, what was your person thinking and feeling last time they saw you? Now this reading is pretty extensive. I'm going to be breaking it up into person A versus person B, excuse me, just in case you resonate as being the other person in the reading. That way we can clearly see what both parties 
we're thinking and feeling. And we're also going to have a look at your connecting energy, your conjoining energy, as I've been calling it. There is going to be an extended as well, um, but we'll get into that when it's time. Let's get into your reading, group three. I'm going to put your deck over to the side for now, because we're actually going to open your reading with some oracle cards. Spirit, for group three. Group three. What was group three's energy last time they saw their person? Starting with person A, what was person A's energy last time they saw person B? We have storm warning in the upright position, number 10. What was person B's energy last time they saw person A? We have woman holding a coin over here. Interesting. That's come out in another group. Um, so without, you know, saying which group it was, if you felt drawn to another group, you may have messages in there as well. But at the back of the deck, your joining energy is patience in the reverse position. I'm hearing that Tyler creator song, Tyler, the creator, excuse me, running out of time, running out of time to make you love me. First of all, I'm going to be dabbing sweat away while we do this because I compromised airflow for audio quality and it's like the middle of the day so she's a little bit she's a little bit sweaty if it gets too bad I'm just going to turn the fan up you guys life is too short to be sweating but let's talk about this conjoining energy while I'm dabbing this patience card reversed is so interesting to me because it straight away is giving me the vibes that you both felt as though you either had a limited amount of time to see each other or the time that you had together was was um, almost like, what's the word? It almost feels like the time that you did have together just wasn't enough. And I feel like the energy that you saw was that you, because of this patience reversed, someone may have felt like they needed to do something in the moment, either spontaneously or in a very sort of rushed way. Um, it'll be interesting to break down the thoughts and feelings, but it just feels like we ran out of time here, group three. It feels like both parties were feeling as though the timing of the situation was just way off. Um, either because you ran out of time or you just in the beginning never had enough time. Um, some of you lost patience with this situation too and, and just weren't like I see one very chaotic energy and then I see another energy of just sort of standing in their power and almost accepting that the situation was clearly not orchestrated in a well-timed well-timed manner um it's an interesting feeling to be honest with you group three i want to i want to get more information to clarify that patience reversed energy because it's coming through in a multitude of ways and i'm not 100 percent confident in how both of you looked at this because i feel that you were both looking at it differently it feels like you both have very different views of that day one of you was feeling challenged in terms of the timing and the other person was almost like well what do you expect like that's where we're at now almost as though the other person felt like this was a sick joke that the universe was doing like right throwing you into this situation and you had to kind of make it work spontaneously it's interesting I'm not picking up a strong energy with that. So I want to go further and let's get more cards so that I'm more confident with the messages that I'm giving to you. But let's have a look first at person A's energy towards person B. So person A's energy was feeling very chaotic with storm warning here. Person A was feeling a climatic sort of culmination with the number 10 on this card they were feeling like wow this is all coming to a head and I have to figure out how to let this sort of happen I feel like person A was experiencing a lot of internal turmoil um 
how would this manifest externally? It depends on the type of person that person A is. I see some of them really trying to hide it. And for some of you, they may be very good at hiding it. Um, but internally, shit was hitting the fan. And person A was really just feeling like, oh my God, it's kind of all falling apart here. Um, I, I don't know why person A almost felt responsible in some way. Like maybe they felt like they had to be the one to try to fix it or they were the reason why it was falling apart. Person A's energy towards person B internally was like, this is coming to a head. And I almost feel like they were disappointed with how it was coming to a head. They didn't want it to come to a head like this. They weren't expecting things to get like this between them and person B. Um, person B on the other hand their energy was feeling very secure person B felt like not only did they have a lot to kind of stand on in terms of their, their position they may have been in a position of authority or they may have felt as though in this position um, they had a lot of support whereas person A um, was very much the opposite. Person A was feeling like their world was falling apart a little bit. Person B was secure in themselves. And I don't see it being a smug security because of the face on this card. It feels like a, just a knowing, like if whatever happens here, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. Whatever happens here, I'm going to be okay. And I do think that person B's energy towards person A was looking at them like it's not all lost in some way. Like because the woman holding a coin was their energy towards person A. So they're looking at person A like you're a lot more put together than you think you are, or you're going to be better than you think you are. Like it's almost like person B for some of you was picking up on the fact that person A was falling apart either through their anxiousness or they're just their inner chaos and person B was kind of looking at them like but why 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 are you letting this situation bother you so much like you, you it doesn't need to be this difficult is what it feels like let's get more cards out we're gonna get that tarot del toro out to have a look at what they were thinking last time because this is going to really help dissect that joining energy as well as the energies we're seeing already. So spirit, what was person A thinking last time they saw person B? What was person A thinking last time they saw person B? What was person A thinking spirit? Mm, the plot thickens. What was person B thinking last time they saw person A, please, spirit? Thank you. What was person B thinking last time they saw person A? At the back of the deck, we have the nine of cups in the reverse position as you're joining energy. What? What? Okay. So in this nine of cups energy, I can see that you were both kind of thinking, well, the shared thoughts that you were having was that the situation isn't exactly making me happy. At the very least, you could both agree that the last time you saw each other, there was an unsatisfied feeling, right? Like you both didn't really get a whole, a, a really good sort of happy moment together. It feels like you were both disappointed for different reasons though. Um, but I, I want to say that there was a feeling of disappointment. For some of you, this is because somebody else took up the time that you were hoping to invest in each other. Um, take it as it resonates. It's not going to fit for all of you group three. But I feel like for some of you, there was another person around that may have preoccupied one of your attentions. So you didn't get as much time with each other as you wanted. Um, but I just feel like you were both thinking like, goodness, this isn't really a a great situation. I'm not getting my emotional fulfillment in this moment. I'm feeling quite unhappy. I'm feeling unsatisfied at the very least. Um, 
And I think that's because you were both respectively hoping for more in this situation. With person A over here, we have the strength card, the valet of wands and the three of cups upright. So I can see that person A was actually really looking forward to seeing person B. They were thinking like, wow, it's so good to be around person B again. I really enjoy their company. It feels like I'm getting to know them better. Um, I feel like um, person B is someone that I want to get to know more. And I think that person A did put a lot of pressure on themselves with the strength card here to maybe have courage to kind of make more of a um, connection with person B or just make more of an effort towards the connection with person B. Person A's thoughts were very positive towards person B, but with the Valley of Wands here, it feels like person A was still looking at person B as someone with potential, a prospect, not someone that they feel very, um, well, not someone that they think they know very well. It's almost like person A was looking at person B with slightly fresh eyes, you know, looking at person B like, wow, they have a lot of potential. They have a lot to offer. I believe that person A was also looking and thinking that this situation is growing with the Valley of Wands there and that there is a journey, a potential journey to be able to explore a shared interest here with person B. I believe that person A realized that person B and them have a lot in common in a specific aspect. And I think that this made person A quite excited, but that's probably where the storm warning kind of began because the energy here is one that was maybe building in excitement at first before it kind of climaxed in a sense of nervousness. I think with the strength card here, person A felt like they had to have courage in order to kind of be this friendly, kind, um, bubbly, accommodating person with the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups does tell me what I picked up on, the fact that there was probably somebody else around that may have both made it easier for person A to gather information because they were maybe bubbly or, or allowing the conversation to be bubbly. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like this was a one-on-one -on -one situation, you know? It feels like this was a shared environment situation, a shared community situation. And I'm even seeing for some of you that this person didn't even talk directly to you. This is not gonna resonate for all of you, obviously, but for some of you, person A was just listening to you talk to somebody else and they were sort of gathering information from that conversation. Um, but what I see here with the strength card is that they were thinking like, goodness, this is this has a lot of potential and I have to come at this correctly, which means I need to have strength, I need to have courage, I need to be my most strong version of myself and I maybe need to be able to show my stronger, more sort of impressionable qualities to person A. So what I'm picking up on is if this person did let their storm, their inner chaos, their inner turmoil get the better of them, then they would have immediately backed down and, and not come forward because they were feeling like they weren't their best, strongest self to be able to do that, which is why they may have felt disappointed in the end. They may have been thinking like, I didn't get as much as I wanted from that situation. Person B's energy is similar, but different. <laughs> Person A may be a fire sign, um, or they may be someone that has like a lot of fire in their charts, not necessarily, take it as it resonates. Whereas person B is showing up as a more sort of grounded, practical person. So a lot of earth, um, some earth placements, maybe especially in their moon sign or um, Venus could be possible. Venus might even have air. Um, their rising sign could be an air sign, but I'm just seeing that person B was thinking, Wow, like I'm feeling something here, but we have the Six of Cups upright, the Eight of Pentacles upright and the Ace of Blades. So person B was definitely thinking like, I can feel a connection here. I feel a sense of familiarity. Person B was feeling pretty comfortable around person A. So person B was looking at person A like, you're somebody that I'm very comfortable around. I feel like I've known you before. I feel like we have a connection and I feel like I'm very comfortable 
talking with you and it's highly likely that person B may have tried to start a conversation with person A um, but I see that person A for some of you may have just been more comfortable kind of watching the conversation unfold in front of them. Now that's not going to apply to all of you, especially with the strength card upright. It's highly likely that there was a discussion between you, group three. Um, I'm just trying to cater for the fact that there's multiple scenarios going on in your group. So take what resonates and I hope it doesn't get confusing, me having to split off into different possibilities here. So I believe that overall for all of you, person B was feeling very confident in whatever interaction they had with person A and it was making them want to know more. They got a new idea here, they got a new way of thinking and they started to, in their own way, see person A in a different way as well. They started to think differently about person A whereas person B was feeling differently about person um, A, um, B. Person A was feeling passionate and chemistry and excited and like, wow, we have a lot in common. Whereas person B was like, wow, I really enjoy talking with you. I'm starting to think that I want to be able to talk to you more. And I see that person B's sort of grounded nature made them think that like I want to spend more time with you and I want to make more of an effort towards you. So person B would have left this interaction with that in their head, like I'm gonna try to make more of an effort towards person A. I'm gonna try to take more time with person A because I believe that they're worth investing in at this point in time. They feel like someone who does stand out to me and I'm starting to think differently about them after that last interaction. So let's have a look at how the two of you were feeling towards each other now. Spirit, how was person A feeling towards person B last time they saw each other? How was person A feeling towards person B last time they saw each other? Oh, oh. I'm hearing that little Uzi Vert song. I don't know if anybody listens to little Uzi Vert. Um, are we keeping that? I think we are. Okay, so in the middle here we have the Knight of Cups and we also have the Sun card upright for person A. So this storm warning energy is so interesting then. Why were they feeling so chaotic inside? Like, oof, overwhelming. Maybe it wasn't a bad chaos. Maybe it was more of like a building of momentum, a building of energy, a culmination of hopes and expectations, especially with all this fire energy. When I think of Leo, I immediately think of someone that has a lot of expectations. Um, because every Leo I've ever met comes with like checklists and <laughs> like they have their own little ways of, of doing things. And I, I mean, they can be very open-minded and flexible at the same time, but there's that sort of fixed energy of them kind of liking certain things to be done a certain way and having certain expectations, especially of their partners so I feel like person A maybe felt like things were really just sort of culminating towards something that they expected. What's going on with person B spirit? What was person B's feelings towards person A? What was person B's feelings towards person A? We have the five of cups reversed. Interesting. What was person B's feelings towards person A? Please spirit, person B. What was person B's? We have judgment reversed and the chariot is upright, but we got to let something come out. What wants to come out, spirit? What was person B's feelings towards person A? What was person B's feelings towards person A? They're definitely a lot more logical and practical, um, but there are feelings on both sides. Person, we have the nine of swords. And your joining energy is the star card reversed in terms of your feelings. You're an interesting group, group three. I feel multiple scenarios happening. And I think that's... 
that doesn't deter from your overall energy to be honest with you but i could see how this energy could have played out in in multiple different ways right your joining energy being the star card reverse tells me that you were both feeling like the situation between you definitely wasn't over yet so sorry if you think that this is the end there was a group where that did happen so you may have picked the wrong group but no you were both feeling like this is just getting started and for some of you you were looking at any previous experiences you've already had with this person and you were kind of connecting the dots here with the star reverse some of you were able to look at any previous um, interactions you had with them and go oh wow that makes sense I feel like you got a better understanding of each other I still think that there's a lot of mystery in this connection like you this feels like the two of you don't know a lot about your current circumstances even if you have a lot of history I just feel like you don't know a lot about what each other's going through currently um, but I think that you got to know each other better group three and I think with the star card reversed you're still trying to understand each other and your own sort of individual why are you like this quirks I believe the star card reversed is also talking about issues from your past that may have been addressed or brought up or triggered there is a feeling of past being brought into this situation and that you were both feeling like that needed to be explored further in order for the connection to be able to move forward I definitely think that you were both very curious about each other last time you saw each other and you both kind of gave this vibe of triggering each other in different ways um person B was triggered to pay more attention to person A and person A was triggered to look at person B as like wow this has a lot of potential and I feel like it's it's growing um, so I feel like joint feelings with the star card reversed there was still a feeling of you don't really know what to necessarily expect next while person A was definitely feeling like things were moving in a positive direction, the joint energy seems to be one of uncertainty in terms of the future. You both don't really know what's going to happen next. Now, person A's feelings towards person B, we have the King of Swords reversed, the High Priestess reversed, and the Full Card upright. So person B definitely got some clarity about, excuse me, Person A got some clarity about person B and they felt like they got to know person B a little bit better with the high priestess reverse. There's still a lot of questions here. There's still a lot of sort of gray areas and I just feel like this made person A want to know person B even more. I feel like person A is almost sitting on the edge of their seat sort of asking and questioning the information they already have and dissecting it and just trying to understand it better so that they can get to know person B better. Person A's feelings here are very deep already especially if this is a new connection this person's already feeling like strongly for person B um, but it's it's more like they're attracted to the the mystery as well and the fantasy that the enigma that is person B they want to kind of know the real version of person B and I feel that that is where this connection has a, a really strong chance of continuing forward because person A enjoys this little sort of chase this little mysterious sort of energy that person B is giving off but at the same time they're not just over romanticizing with the high priestess reverse the king of swords reverse this person when given the chance wants to ask questions they want to get to know the real person B um, they want to deal with facts they want to create a real real situation not just something that exists in fantasy I see that person A's feelings are still somewhat undecided in terms of whether they um, love them or whether they are strongly attracted to them in a romantic way it just feels like there is a deep feelings already but they're kind of plagued with uncertainty because there needs to be more moments spent together the king of swords reversed makes me think that their mind isn't completely made up yet and with the high priestess reverse they're learning to trust more they're learning to be more kind of inquisitive and curious and ask questions but 
I still feel for most of you, there's still a lot that person A doesn't know. With the full card upright, let's talk about this positive elephant in the room. Person A was feeling very optimistic. Person A was like the one carrying the <laughs> optimism banner and going, yay, <laughs> I believe in us. Person A was literally feeling like everything is leading to a powerful new beginning in this connection. And person A was feeling so confident about this that they are with the mindset that they're ready to, to take a leap of faith towards person B. The last time the two of you saw each other, they were feeling like they were about to fall, um, like they're about to sort of jump off this cliff and fall for you in the sense of take a, a, the next step towards this connection, towards you, um, if you're not person A. Otherwise, you could be person A leaping off this cliff towards person B. But I see that person A was definitely the one carrying the optimism in this connection and the one sort of fueling the optimism that the star card can also represent. Almost feeling a bit foolish too, especially if this is an older person because I'm seeing indication of a fairly mature person over here. Um, but something about the last time the two of you saw each other made this person feel young again, inspired and naive. So let's have a look at person B. Person B, we have the Five of Cups reversed, Judgment reversed, and the Nine of Swords upright. Person B's energy is slightly different. We know that you both shared that star energy, that feeling of obviously connection and nostalgia, which I didn't talk about, but you were kind of looking at the situation as a developing situation in your own ways. The way that person B differs is I feel like person B actually had some preconceived idea of person A and it wasn't a positive one. Person B thought nothing's going to happen with person A. Nothing's going to, you know, change. It's just going to be the same old, same old as when I first met them and my mind's made up and that's just the reality of the situation. However, the last time that the two of you saw each other, person B's feelings changed. Person B started to feel more positive, started to feel less disappointed in the connection. And they also just started to kind of get their head away from such negative thoughts in terms of they were looking at person A very differently. And I think that with the five of cups reversed, an external situation may have prompted this change in mood. Um, and it just kind of made them turn around and look at person A and go, oh, wow, like this is someone that I actually enjoy being around. Their feelings changed. And with the judgment card reversed, it was like person B had this delayed awakening, this delayed realization, especially with the nine of swords upright. It feels delayed. It feels like crap. What have I done here? I've kind of self-sabotaged. I've kind of jeopardized this situation because I assumed that person A could never be into me, for example, or I assumed that person A didn't see me that way or that person A wasn't interested in pursuing this connection. And it's like they realized after the fact that, dang, I've got this wrong, a delayed awakening. Their feelings definitely changed. Something was stirring here. And I still think that they walked away from that situation feeling unsure about exactly what they were feeling. Like you're both kind of mirroring that aspect. Um, but they were feeling somewhat like open. Let's say that they were feeling definitely open to where this developing situation could be leading the two of you. So let's get some channeled messages next. We're going to have a look at what the two of you would have said to each other if you had the chance. What would you have said? What did you want to say that you didn't say um, from person A to person B? I'm just going to reset my camera and then I'll be right back with channeled messages. Okay, channeled messages. Oh my lord. So many animals. We've got a dog, a cat. Um, some kind of wolf. Oh no, that's a pig. My bad. Um, some kind of monkey. Interesting. A stork. Butterflies. Some kind of dove. A lot of animals. I'm just saying all this in case any of it resonates as signs that you may have been looking out for. Interesting stuff. Okay, spirit. What did person A want to say to person B? 
What did person A want to say to person B? What did person A... Okay. What did person... <clears throat> okay, that flipped upside down. Uh, up, upright, excuse me. I knew you were going to get a three of cups. Exciting stuff. It's the good three of cups, not the third party three of cups, which is perfect because that's what I channeled for you. I didn't think that you had a negative third party interference. It just felt like there were a lot of people in the area, you know, in the vicinity. Um, attentions were distracted momentarily. So what did person B want to say to person A, please, spirit? What did person B... The B... Bop, bop, bada, bops. What did they want to say to person A? Oh, hello. What did person B want to say to person A, please, spirit? Ah! What did person, oh my lord in heaven. Can I just get one more card, please? This deck is something else. I think that after this revelation, person B was like, crap. <laughs> what have I done? I feel like person B, especially if they're a chatty one, may have been like, dang, I messed up here. And there's a lot that I want to say. So I do think that person B especially left with like a million thoughts and they probably went to bed at that night thinking to themselves, crap, 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 crap. What have I done? What have I done? My brain won't let me sleep because I'm thinking of everything that I could have, would have, should have said. Um, you both had this sort of buildup of energy, but I feel like person A felt it at the time, whereas person B felt it after and they were like, dang, it feels like as anxiousness. And in the middle, we have the six of swords. Excuse me, at the back, we have the six of swords, which is going in the middle. I apologize, y'all. I'm channeling all that nervousness, that anxiety. Interesting. <sighs> wow. So that six of swords in the middle is very interesting to me personally. It tells me that you both wanted a conversation that would help move the connection forward into calmer waters. You both wanted a conversation that would help the two of you be more comfortable around each other, more at peace with each other's company. And I feel like you wanted a conversation that was going to make progress respectively based on your individual intentions. I feel like the goal here was that if you didn't talk, you both at the very least wanted a conversation. So let's have a look at person A. Person A over here has the three of cups with the seven of, um, excuse me, ones upright. So person A definitely was feeling very strongly, passionately towards person B, especially if you're asking about a romantic person, okay? A, a potential love interest or someone who you are curious about in a love way. Um, this person was feeling very attracted to person B. Person A was looking at person B like, wow, this is intense. Like this is really stirring some strong feelings and at the very least person a just wanted to kind of have more fun casual conversation with person b this feels like the kind of setting where you're able to just sit down and laugh and drink maybe if you're able to um and just kind of talk and some of the conversation gets serious but some of the conversation is just really light-hearted like what did you do today what was that like have you what's your you know have you spoken to so and so recently um what did you have for breakfast oh that's interesting are you following so and so on instagram have you seen this latest tiktok don't you think that's hilarious wow did you see what the bartender just did like just kind of really sort of playful um at times serious but mostly just generating a, a nice sort of social interaction type of conversation and I feel with the seven of wands it's quite likely that person A really tried to build up the courage in the moment to do that. I don't think that for all of you, they succeeded with storm warning here. I think they were feeling like pressure to do that, but I feel like ultimately for some of you, they didn't succeed. Um, they wanted to tell you, they wanted to make their intentions clearer. At the very least, with the Ace of Swords here, they wanted to talk to you. So if this person didn't talk to you, that's what they really wanted. And I think that with the Ace of Swords here, they had a list of fresh questions they wanted to ask you based on the last time they saw you. It's definitely like they noticed something about you last time they saw you and they wanted to ask you about it. They wanted to say, hey, person, you know, person B, 
group three person B. Um, what's going on with your blah, 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 you know? I noticed when you came today, like you came in an Uber, is everything all right with your car? Just little things like that. They noticed something that they wanted to talk to person B about. And I see with the eight of swords that for most of you, you didn't have that conversation or you didn't have that conversation in depth. I feel that more could have been said and I feel that more communication could have just happened in general. I feel with the Eight of Swords, this person got very stuck in their head ultimately. And person B, at the very least, person A wanted to tell person B, even if we did talk to one another, there was so much more that I wanted to say to you. And I'm sorry I got stuck in, I'm sorry I got stuck in my head. I'm sorry I couldn't get the words out. Or for some of you, I'm sorry I couldn't find the right words to tell you. Um, person A regrets that. Heck yeah. But also what I'm getting here with the full card is that person A feels like there's going to be another opportunity to talk to person B. That's what they feel. So let's have a look at person B over here now. <laughs> Who's going through their own little thing? Person B is going through their own little thing. First of all, person B was also picking up a vibe from person A. It's highly likely that person B was realizing that person A was kind of into them. And person B might have kind of felt that chemistry as well. Um, especially if they weren't thinking about it before. Person B was picking up on a vibe from person A. And what they wanted to say was very similar to what person A wanted to say. Person A said, let me have you. Person B is like, I want you. So it's like you both kind of wanted to move the conversation forward or the connection forward through conversation. Um, and I feel like person B also wanted to say, like, I'm sorry, I didn't think that now was the right time. I'm sorry that I gave you the impression that I wasn't interested in you. Um, I'm really feeling quite strongly towards you. And I'm, I'm kind of ignoring some of my red flags that I had before this meeting to conversate with you or to kind of connect with you. For some of you, person B told themselves, like, I'm not looking for anything right now. I'm not looking for a relationship. I don't need any more friends. And then person B met person A in this instance and was like, wow, actually, now is the time. Like, I, I want this person. I'm kind of low-key obsessed with this person already. Person B felt quite attached to person A last time the two of them interacted. There was this feeling of, like, wow, like I'm actually getting a strong feeling for this person. But I believe that in conversation, they kind of wish that they had, if this is a romantic connection, flirted more. I think that person B wanted to make intentions clearer here. With the devil card in the reading, it's like they wanted to really toe the line with person A. They wanted to kind of see what they could get away with mischievously. If this isn't a romantic connection for all of you, what I'm seeing is person B wanted to makes maybe drop some dark humor in there with the devil card and just sort of get a better vibe of what person a was into and whether the two of you could connect in more sort of quirky ways like hey i have a sick sense of humor do you as well um or hey like I'm, this is what i'm into are you into that as well i feel like the devil card meant that person b was wanting to push boundaries here with conversation and that makes me think of humor and flirting because there's only so much you can do with a conversation in a, in that kind of way unless you're being downright rude and prejudiced and that's not the vibe that i'm getting from person b it feels very passionate and like chemistry is telling me to do this <laughs> type of feeling. We also have you are right and yes here. So I feel like person B was wanting to kind of say to person A, like, I feel the same as you, like, you're right. Like I'm, I'm getting a positive vibe too, or I'm getting strong feelings as well, or I'm getting like a strong positive connection as well. Like I want to talk to you. Like I'm, I see you in a good light. Um, I feel pretty secure in this connection and I, I want to explore it more. Um, I feel like person B, if they didn't get the chance, they just wanted to be more clear 
towards person A. They wanted to really make a good impression with that yes card and you are right. Person B wanted to make sure that person A was looking at them positively and that they saw them in a really light way. I do think that person B wanted to crack jokes with the sun card and the devil card there. It's like they wanted the conversation to be humorous and fun and funny and they wanted to laugh and they wanted to smile with person A. Um, Whereas person A was looking at person B like, oh my God, like <laughs> I'm getting so nervous <laughs> and I really want you and let me have you and I want to talk to you and I want to ask questions, but I'm too afraid to talk. It's so bizarre. Well, let's get some closing advice <laughs> before we go into your extended. Oh my gosh, spirit. What do you have to say to, pers to, to person, <laughs> to group three, whoever they are? Person A or Person B, what have you got to say to Group 3, please, Spirit? What advice do you have for Group 3 after they've listened to this reading of what happened last time? What advice do you have for Group 3 in this situation? What advice do you have for Group 3? There's a lot of advice that Spirit has for you. At the back of the deck, we have Make in the reverse position. Yeah, this for you feels like letting go of expectations, both of you, I'm sorry. Like it's good to recognize potential and that's not what Spirit's talking about. Spirit is saying person B kind of failed in this situation because person B was making up their mind before they had all the information about person A. And person A was making too many expectations to the point where they blew this thing out of proportion when actually it was just a chance to have a fun, lighthearted, interesting conversation. Um, they've made so many heavy expectations that they uh, basically created an inner tornado. So Spirit's like, you know what? It's good to see potential in someone. It's great to have chemistry with someone. But at the end of the day, don't let your expectations put so much pressure on a situation that it literally breaks it before you've even had the chance to make anything. Spirit is strongly encouraging all of you to pursue something here. Um, and I think that it's going to depend on your individual situations. I think that with begin here, there is a feeling of this sort of taking off between the two of you and just kind of following the natural pace of it. Again, without projecting heavy expectations, follow the natural order of how this connection is proceeding because it's very clear now that the shyer person, person A, is very interested in taking a leap of faith and feeling like they're wanting to progress things. Whereas person B is like, oh wow, I, I can think differently now. I'm more open-minded. I'm going to be more receptive now and I'm going to be more engaging. So the goal here is to allow this connection, or I feel the advice at least, let's not say the goal, the advice here is to allow this connection to naturally further itself and continue to grow and for some of you to ground and, and begin and start something. Um, but I think that the goal is also with power here to just follow the natural process. I believe that power is talking about this interesting dynamic that the two of you have where you are kind of overthinking things either after the fact or in the moment. I think that person A is looking at this as a power struggle at the time that it's happening. Person A is like, when do I talk next? What do I say next? I'm so nervous. Is it my turn to ask a question? And then person B is just kind of like, la, 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 la. And then afterwards they're like, damn it. I didn't let person A talk at all. Like I talked the whole time. So with power upright, your advice here is to just follow the natural flow of things. And I think that as you spend more time with each other, you're going to get a better vibe. Person A is going to warm up. Person B is going to get a stronger impression of what person A is like. And the, the situation is just going to naturally unfold into a more balanced sort of dynamic. I feel with power upright, the chemistry here seems to be one that is ignited something, but I think that there is more to discover about each other. I definitely see similarities between the two of you, shared interests, shared hobbies, things that you can use as like building blocks in this relationship, whether it's a friendship, a romantic potential 
person or you know a long lost family member whatever this is you have enough in common to be able to spend more time together we also have endurance here so i see the advice being one of like just don't don't knock it until you try it i think endurance is talking about going the mile and while it's healthy to have boundaries and to be obviously grounded in reality and if you're seeing too many red flags it's it's time to you know, consider if this is worth continuing. I also think that endurance is saying that there is long-term potential here to have this person in your life in a significant, meaningful way over a long, extensive period of time. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group three. I'm going to take this into the extended reading now where we're going to have a look at what you've both learned since you've last seeing each other and we're also going to look at what you both hope for in terms of the future of this connection i'm going to pull messages channeled messages about what your next conversation is going to look like and then we're also going to get advice for you as well in the extended reading so if you're keen to watch that um, the link is in the description box below i'll see you there um, if this reading resonated it may be helpful to gain more messages in the extended reading before you go wherever you're going thank you so much for all of your support right here on youtube thank you for your time for your energy for supporting me this community and free tarot on youtube i appreciate every interaction that i have with you guys however fleeting or extensive it is so please look after your beautiful self and i hope to connect with you in another video bye